Hi again then guys and welcome to my full review, first impressions, first look, breakdown, all that kind of stuff with regard to GT Sports December Christmas update, the 1.53 patch of course, and a couple of points of clarification for maybe those who haven't had the chance to try it yet or maybe you just haven't loaded it into the game or whatever. We can only actually access four out of the seven vehicles straight off the bat and the three that you cannot currently access are unsurprisingly the safety cars, slash police cars, slash whatever you want to refer to them as, you know what I'm talking about, the Charger, the Toyota Crown, and the Megane. And the reason why we cannot currently access those is because they are going to be available, I believe starting on the 24th, from the mileage exchange. And first of all, we're going to get the Crown and the Charger, and then the Megane is going to come a little bit later, which is an interesting way of doing it. It kind of draws the pack out a little bit longer in terms of actually accessing the cars, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. And of course, you will buy those with mileage points. In terms of the vehicles that we can buy, though, and of course Laguna Seca, which is a huge deal and for many people is the standout part of the pack anyway, what are my actual thoughts? Well, first of all, I'm going to use the new circuit experience, which is on Laguna Seca, which in its own right is pretty cool because usually they do not add circuit experience at the same time as a new track. Usually it's a little bit late. It comes like the next month. So to add that is pretty cool. I think you can earn a bit of extra cash while getting re into the track, or maybe if you've never driven on Laguna Seca before, you can get used to it. And that is of course using the Viper, as you can see here. And although I'm probably not going to feature all of the footage from the circuit experience, I think what I might do is actually feature it later on today as a standalone video so that you can actually watch the breakdown basically of each of those segments and maybe use it as a little bit of a guide if you want to, although I will be doing a dedicated video which will be a full lap guide of Laguna Seca as I've done for other tracks like the Nürburgring and Le Mans, etc. in the past. The long and the short of it is though, I love the track. I've already said I love Laguna Seca, it's one of my favourite real world tracks of the Gran Turismo series, it's always great to see it in a racing game, I love the fact that we can finally change the time of day, which is not something you can typically do in Gran Turismo on this track, it looks fantastic, it actually reminds me quite a lot of how the track looks in Forza 7, and a lot of people will kind of have the hairs on the back of their neck rise when I, whenever I mention Forza or something, but it's cool because at least there's consistency there between both games compared to real life. It's a very sunny track, I've heard some people complaining about not having the option of rain, clearly said people don't understand how California works, but Laguna Seca feels and looks great. It's fantastic to have it back, gonna have a ton of fun here, doubtless hundreds if not thousands of lobbies of course, and it's a great opportunity to obviously experience the new cars as well. And with that segue, let's talk about the new cars, or at least the ones that we can currently drive. Now if you're wondering what I'm gonna do about those pace cars, of course just stick around on the channel and as soon as they're available I will be reviewing them, probably tuning them as well, because for those who haven't heard, there are actually no Group X vehicles in this whole pack. Even the safety cars are N category vehicles, which is kind of weird and very inconsistent, but kind of cool as well, because it means that you can use them for more than just looking at or driving in one make events. So first of all, of course, let's get to the obvious one, my favorite car of the pack, a vehicle which I've talked about so many times on the channel. And even though I would probably never classify it as one of my absolute favorite cars, it is, in my opinion, one of the best, perhaps even the best all round supercar in the 2010s and the reason why i would say that is because the ford gt has such a different approach to stuff like your la ferraris and mclaren p1s it feels kind of old school compared to them i would say that the ford gt is the ultimate supercar of the 2010s because stuff like the la ferrari and the porsche 918 and the mclaren they're not really supercars, they're hypercars, so it's it's almost like a different level of competition. Whereas the Ford GT feels much more like the kind of spec that you would expect from a, a Lamborghini Murcielago or a Zonda from the 2000s, and I don't think that's a bad thing, I think it's all the better for it. You've got of course a completely different engine, a fairly controversial one, a V6 of course, 3.5 litre turbo aspirated, but it's beefy, 550 pound feet of torque, just under 650 horsepower, and the weight is very good. And part of that, of course, is that it's not so 
hybrid obsessed as some of the others so it doesn't have these massive battery packs and all that kind of stuff so the weight is really good it's 1385 kilos which severely undercuts most of your you know all-wheel drive lambos and hybrids and all that kind of stuff it's as i said more of an old school approach and i believe it's all the better for it it's more raw it's an old school genuine supercar experience it feels similar enough to the 2000s for gt but at the same time that much faster but of course when it comes to actually reviewing the car i will put more of my thoughts out there in its own dedicated review which will be dropping on the channel tomorrow it will probably be the very first car that i do review so moving on next to the porsche the Porsche is the only car of the pack which I got straight up wrong because all of the others I guessed correct to some degree, even the Toyota, which I wasn't exact on. I did put the crown even as the image in the video. This one though, I was just wrong. I thought it was a GT2. It is a 993 generation unmestakably, but it's not a GT2. It is of course a Carrera RS. Not as powerful, if I recall, as the GT2, but also potentially lighter than a lot of its rivals. It only weighs 1,235 kilos, which is like WRC rally car territory, and it's a very interesting choice. I also find it kind of curious because it's only 50,000 credits less than the Ford GT, which either means that the Ford has a great price or that this has a bad one, <laughs> because this is a half a million credit car, and the Ford, incidentally, is 550,000, which falls exactly where I thought it would be, between 400 and 600,000, because it just makes sense. This one is pretty expensive. I mean, I'm not exactly sure why they made it that expensive. It feels like it could easily be 200 grand and that would still suit the car. It's definitely gonna be OP. It feels fantastic straight out of the box. You can get the tail out, but it's got a lot of grip. And the fact that it only has 295 horsepower certainly does not hinder it. I mean, there are literally hot hatches these days with more power than that. And yet this feels great. It's light, it's grippy, and the performance that it has belies the power. It definitely is one of those cars that goes way beyond the raw spec and I applaud it for that and I'm curious to see what all of these cars can do when tuned as well because every single car that I'm driving in this review is completely stock. I haven't even changed the tyres, all I've done is turn the traction control off and that is literally it to get the authentic feel of what they're like. And of course, once again, stick around on the channel for my review of the Porsche, where I'll get much more in-depth with it, and I think that will probably be tomorrow as the second review after the Ford GT. Now moving on next to the Golf, this is the least powerful car of the pack, the slowest car of the pack, but also a fascinating little vehicle because of course it was revolutionary in its time, and it was already a great car in the past of the franchise, even as far back as, what, Gran Turismo 4, I believe because it wasn't a premium, obviously it never had the detailed interior, even in GT6 it didn't, but it was a great little hot hatch in its own way. I actually think it feels better now, which you would kind of hope it would, <laughs> but yeah, it definitely feels good, the suspension feels authentic, the handling is of course fantastic, it's only 30 grand, and incidentally the four cars that you can buy in this update add up to just over 1.1 million credits, so it's not even that expensive. Which, in other words, means you can get a Ford GT, a Porsche 911 Carrera RS, a Golf GTI, and a Toyota Crown for not that much more than just the Aventador SV alone. And to me, that's a far better deal to get these four cars. I mean, the Ford GT alone is better than the Lambo, so I think this is a pretty good value pack, in other words. Now, moving on into that Toyota Crown, this is actually the car that surprised me, pleasantly surprised me, that is, out of this update. And the reason why is very simple. I had no expectations for it. I didn't dislike the car, I didn't like the car. I have no familiarity with it whatsoever. You never see these in the UK. I'm not sure exactly where they are sold. Uh, Japan, I guess. I'm not sure if they're stateside as well. But it's an interesting car. Of course, it makes a lot of sense to have this kind of machine. And it's a cool car, but when I actually drove it, it feels fantastic. So if you were looking forward to the Crown, and if you're still looking forward to the pace car version, if you will, then I guarantee you're not gonna be disappointed with it because it's 57,000 credits, it's got over 300 horsepower stock, it weighs 1,650 kilos, so it is the heaviest of these four, but at the same time, it does not feel like it. And my favorite thing about this car is that it gives me major Tom's Toyota Chaser vibes. And anyone who's played the past of the Gran Turismo series will know that that was a great sports sedan. I've even reviewed it here on the channel in GT6. It's a sleeper car. It's a very undervalued one. Everyone always goes for the Chargers and the Mercedes AMGs and the RS6s. And the Chaser gets kind of forgotten. 
in the later games, but it's a brilliant sedan, and this feels a lot like it. So overall, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on this update. I love Laguna Seca being in the game. Of course I have other tracks that I'd love to see, but from this point onward, I'm actually kind of open-minded on the tracks that they add, because it's hard to predict new ones. It's almost impossible to predict them, unless you just name every track you can think of. But in terms of this update, I love Laguna Seca, I love that we finally have the Ford GT, the Golf is a great addition and a fairly obvious one, the Porsche is a curious choice, I would have preferred a GT2, but sure, they've definitely made it clear with the Porsches that they've been adding, the 911s in particular, that they are the more track focused versions like your GT3s and RSs, we don't have a single turbo in there which is kind of curious, but again, it's a track racing game so it's not too surprising. And of course the Toyota Crown is a kind of unexpected sleeper car which harkens back to the classic days of the franchise and feels great. It's a genuinely new car that we've never had before and a really good one too. These are all very useful vehicles and it's very unusual to have seven cars, of course once we can access the other ones too, that are all useful in the end categories. That's a very rare thing to have in an update, to have an, a great track and to have cars that are all useful because usually there's at least one or two Group X cars in there that we kind of moan and groan about. Not this time, and I think that's pretty cool. So ultimately, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, I'd love to hear yours down below. If you've had a chance to already use this update, to check out the track, to check out the cars, which is your favourite car, what are your thoughts on them? Is there maybe a car that you don't like so much in there? For me, I think probably my least liked is maybe the Porsche, because it doesn't interest me that much. But even then, I don't dislike the car. Ultimately though, that's it for this review, and as I said, stick around on the channel for sure in the coming days and weeks, because not only will I be reviewing every single car and the pace cars when they are released as well, but I will be doing multiple tune setups for these vehicles also, and considering how good they are stock, I have very high hopes for a number of these. But that's it for this vid, of course I'll see you next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.